Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Cannabis View. I'm delighted to be joined on this episode by Urien Kuster, who is the founder or co-founder at the Institute for Medicinal Cannabis in Netherlands. Uh, the IMC aims to improve the provision of information about medicinal cannabis to patients and prescribers and to help strengthen the collaboration in the research and scientific network. How are you keeping today, Urien? Hi, Owen. Good morning. I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. Thank you, very much. you just uh, told me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for joining. It's uh, very much appreciated. And I know your man with a wealth of information, and I'm sure the audience are going to love this quick chat. Do you maybe want to give everybody a brief overview of how you got into the cannabis industry and uh, where you are and what companies you're a part of at the moment? Of course. So I've joined the cannabis industry about six years ago now. Um, I started out working for an extraction facility uh, very close to where I'm actually living in, uh, in Wageningen in the Netherlands. Uh, Wageningen, as people might know, is the uh, agricultural capital of the world, the best agricultural university in the world. Let me just uh, turn the sound of my phone off. My, my apologies. So we started out with an extraction company. They have developed their own extraction technology, and uh, it's different from uh, CO2, but uh, uses basically uh, some some things are the same. Some some parameters are the same. So that's where I started out six years ago. Started working with uh, different kinds of cannabis, both the medical cannabis from uh, from the Dutch government, the better can cannabis, but also with uh, outdoor hemp. So with hemp for CPD extraction, uh, rolled into both markets: food supplement market and THC market. Went on going from there, and eventually ended up uh, uh, founding the Institute for Medicinal Cannabis and working for an, a lighting company where I do the strategy. So where we do provide uh, lighting to cultivation areas and uh, my expertise on cannabis and cannabinoids uh, makes the lighting and the cannabis a very good fit. And uh, we also founded the Institute officially last year in January, the January 1st, 2021. Uh, a year before we started having round tables and uh, just sort of organizing ourselves. And since last year, we're now officially uh, in foundation. Okay, incredible. Yeah, you seem to have some great partners, Transval Pharma, Bedrican, Figran, and a lot of doctors and researchers. So the objective with the Institute for Medicinal Cannabis is to basically coalesce all these uh, smart people with a lot of research and data all in one centralized spot. And is the objective then to have software where doctors around the country can dial in? Or is this based on uh, information you're going to create papers and distribute those papers around? A, cu yeah, a, cu a couple of things. Uh, I think the main the main thing is what you said is cooperation. So we are trying to cooperate between all fields of the medical cannabis. So that's doctors, it's uh, specialists, it's pharmacists, it's academics, but also people from the industry, it's the government. So we, we, you need all of those to create a good framework, a good legal framework, but also a framework for patients to actually get a product. Um, one of the things we are doing now, is, and, and we're only a relatively small foundation it's non-for-profit so we don't charge uh, a lot of money uh, not at all even so it's it, it's it's a we don't get paid anything as a, as a board member of the institute so we really do this to improve the industry and we don't prov provide with thousands and thousands of papers what we are doing is providing fact sheets um we have the first two ones available i think they're for chronic pain and for uh, epilepsy if i'm saying this correctly and what we're doing is we call it the fact sheets, and so it's basically a sort of summary on what is available for doctors and patients. So what is currently the state of research on chronic pain? What kind of products are being used? Uh, what's the current state? Just a very factual overview, not another you need to use this, or uh, this is something, this counts as evidence, just a very good overview, factual, observ uh, yeah, observative overview. So we're currently cre creating those. And one of the other things we just launched is a, I don't know how this translates, but it's a, you always have this sort of you always have this piece of paper with your medicines right where it says okay this is the list of side effects you might experience if you use uh, this product so uh, uh what's the english word for it the yeah just a piece of paper with the inst instructions so but some people they, those are always very tiny and very detailed and it's hard for so people to detrimental effects yeah. yeah 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 i guess exactly. right. so what we now done is we create a very simple video of it it's like a, a generic thing in the netherlands which is available for all pharmacies it's not branded in any way not even by us not by anyone which is just short three minute videos explaining cannabis cannabis floss or flower and cannabis uh, oil 
So just very simple. What is it? Where can you get it? What does it do? And how do you use it? Just very simple, uh, simple animated videos for people to use, which they get a QR code from the pharmacy if they get a cannabis product. And they can just view it online, how to use it and what it is. Just very, just providing information to the patients. That's just our goal. Okay, so initial stepping stone of information for a patient or a medical practitioner who's looking at the first level of information. Is there exactly. another plat is there another platform? Because the one thing I'm starting to notice, we're actually doing an article on software and cannabis now over the next week. And it's the one mm -hmm. thing I'm starting to see movement in the European space because it's all well and good, the companies who are cultivating and growing, but if the doctors don't have access to be able to track prescriptions and track the medicines and track the behavior of each patient, uh, I, I, I see that's where the next move is coming in. So are you guys planning on building some sort of software that allows the doctor full access or are you guys initially just doing this as, look, the industry needs to move forward. We, we've all come together to help this industry move forward and the objective is not to turn this into a large corporation it's basically to get the industry up off the up off the ground and help as much as we can yeah the definitely the latter um i have also seen on these cannabis conferences i've seen these parties providing software and they're i think now on startup phase even one of our partners is trying to set uh the institute's trying to set it up but we are as an organization really want to remain uh, a neutral objective party uh non-commercial so so we would if a partner of us provides a good software that's functional and where this kind of data can be exchanged, we would promote we would promote it for the partner. Like if somebody would reach out or experts would reach out to us or specialists, where can I find this? We would redirect them to the partner. We would not uh, do this ourselves because yeah. we think that's not our role. We only want to be a facilitator and not some uh, not a an actual player in the in the industry. Yeah, no, I think that the two. Uh... The two pillars there seem to can't cross. You either have to be offering advice and be willing to educate or you go for a monetizational company. I don't think the two of those can coalesce. Well, they can coalesce, but I don't think you'll get taken seriously over the long term of time. I think the, guy, the way the route you guys are taking is something that us in Ireland can learn from that. Look, there needs to be a board set up independent of everybody's venture that basically helps the industry move forward at no uh, cost and at no gain to any of the members of the board? Definitely. I think it all, like the con Ireland, I think that's in, in some regards the same as the Netherlands. It's not really big. There's not a lot of different parties with a lot of interest. I mean, it should be possible to set something up. There's a lot of common ground. We found the common ground here. There's a lot of common ground, I'm sure, in Ireland as well. Uh, we also did a, a, a conference last year in Denmark where they invited us to the Institute also to speak on what our initiative is this year. We were invited again to speak on what we did in the first year. And every, I think every country can benefit from such an initiative because there is a lot of common ground. And if you want to be taken seriously also by your own government, by the, by the healthcare, then you need to provide a neutral standpoint. If you come from it from a commercial aspect, they always, they just in very short, they will say, okay, he's just out here to make money and he just want to make money. That's his own only goal. And if you come more from a patient perspective and more from a common ground, like we notice these things. And, and, and so for, for a problem in the end was where uh, scientists had a hard time finding a product or where do I get the product? Where do you get it from? We see the pharmacists don't know what to prescribe. Uh, sorry, doctors don't know what to prescribe. So they ask the pharmacist and we just, I think every country can benefit from a facilitating place who knows where all the players are, where the experts are. We have a lot of experts who are affiliated with the institute we just if they do cannabis research we ask them if you will if they want to be an expert and if there's ever a topic like it's chronic pain or ms or epilepsy we know okay you can contact this specialist ask his opinion maybe he can help you setting up a research it's just really facilitating i, I think any country in the eu could benefit from it yeah, no, very much agreed. I want to move on now to just the Netherlands. I have a couple of questions about the industry over there. Do you guys produce enough cannabis for your medical cannabis program or do you import as well? No, no, we export about 80%, I think, of the, the cannabis. So so Berocan has been export is, is the sole producer at the moment. Uh, there's a medical tender ongoing to have two medical growers where I mean, Berocan is not 100% guaranteed to be one of the two, but it's very likely there will be one of the two uh, growers, and so there will be one new party providing cannabis. 
Um, but currently, almost every all cannabis is being exported. Uh, all cannabis is being so officially the cannabis is for the Dutch government. We have the Office of Medicinal Cannabis, who gives basic, basically what Better Can is is a current contract manufacturer. They create cultivate the cannabis uh, for the government and they distribute it. And all the uh, records of it are just online findable. It's all transparent. And most of our cannabis goes to Germany, actually. And okay. I think. Yeah, I'm, Germany I'm, seems to be taking in cannabis from Malta, from Denmark, from the Netherlands. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they, have, they basically have no cultivation themselves. I think they have like three, three cultivators and they produce a thousand or two thousand kilograms each. I'm not 100 percent and uh, that's not enough to satisfy all their patients. So they have to import it and they have been importing it from the Netherlands for quite a, quite some time. Yeah, we previously talked to Sonny Murenhout from the Lederlands who uh, about cultivation, and he gave us a, an overview of a number of things. So it, 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 when it comes to the product in the Netherlands, the pharmacies are the ones that distribute the medical cannabis over there? Yeah, correct. And so you would get a, as a patient, you would get a prescription from your doctor, from a specialist, and then you could go to a pharmacist, any pharmacist in the Netherlands where you can get the cannabis flower. And the cannabis oil is a bit more difficult because not all uh, pharmacists make the oil. There's two currently two who make the oil. We are also partners, the Transvaal and the Clinical Cannabis Care, where you get your cannabis oil. Okay, very interesting. So when it comes to the pharmacies, and let's say the buyer for the pharmacies who are getting the new products that are coming out, they really only have one company to supply them with product at the moment, hopefully two within the next 12 months. Is that correct? They only have one. And they not even directly because because it's being sourced from the government. So it goes from the cultivator to the government, from the government to the distributor, from the distributor it goes to the, uh, the pharmacist. But uh, um, yeah, basically one source. Very interesting because I think over in Ireland we're going to have the exact opposite scenario that whoever has the Class A import license will then be able to source the best product for the pharmacies to be able to sell. I don't think there'll be a, a cultivation operation over in Ireland that'll be able to be big enough to feed the whole industry over here. I can imagine, like it's not an ideal situation where you only have one. Just from a risk perspective, you want to differentiate. I mean, the, the cannabis currently being provided by Dutch government is, is, is very good. Sh quality it's gmp qualified flower so it's not an issue in terms of quality it's more of a you want a more diversified portfolio you want more producers to see what you can get maybe some different strain there's all kind of you just want to see what's more possible and if you think it doesn't even necessarily need to be a better product but if you think it's going to be a better product from uh, any other producer you should be able to uh, to get it i think that's something all countries eventually will go to where they also will allow imports but for the Netherlands, currently, it's not possible. Yeah, no, very. It, it's very interesting to see what's going on in Europe. I t definitely think there's a, a lot of movement. I can see it over in Ireland over the last five to six months that uh, the steam seems to be gathering behind the Germany leading the way with Germany are taking the headlines, shall we say, with what's happening over there. And it seems to people are taking notice. But I think New York is going to be a massive one for the Irish people. We look over to New York and Boston a good bit in New York. They, they go live, I think, in like six weeks now or eight weeks with retail stores in Manhattan. And if you've been over there recently, it's full of vans. It's full of CBD mm -hmm. stores and TAC products. So it's going to be interesting to see now that the cannabis tourism, I think, that happens between North America and Europe. Yeah, I mean, Amsterdam is obviously a massive spot for, for cannabis tourism, and there's still a lot coming. Uh, so that, that that's going to be interesting. You have the coffee shop experiment as well in the Netherlands. So there's, there's a lot of things uh, we don't have the time for to dive into, but it will be interesting how to develop. I just want to say that on the on the German uh, uh, possible legalization, that let's not all focus on just Germany and just the uh, recreational medicine is on the market. It's very interesting. It's, it can be very big. Don't forget that we have an approved uh, cannabis medicine with Epidiolex from GW Pharma, which was one of the main headlines of 2019, 2018, but is currently almost like it's forgotten by uh, by the uh, everybody in industry. So medical says a lot of potential. So I would really, anybody who's listening or anybody viewing this, like, it's not just possible legalization in Germany. There are other things happening in the industry, definitely as well. 
Yeah, I think any good medical cannabis program that has chronic pain and neuropathic pain on it is going to allow for a huge chunk of the legal market to be turned legal and for a lot of patients to be able to access a, a medicine that uh, is going to be beneficial to not everybody, but for some of the patients, it's definitely going to work. So we've hit 15 minutes already. I could actually fly along talking to you at the moment. For anybody who wants to know more about the Institute for Medicinal, Can Medicinal Cannabis, this is the website below. It'll be in the description below. I highly recommend go, go, go and checking it out and learning as much as you can uh yuri and it's been great to talk to you mate hopefully we get to chat again in the next six or eight months and see get an update and hopefully we've got more news going on in europe all right it was my pleasure thanks for inviting me thank you very much guys see you in the next episode Ooh.